Hello friends, and also hello enemies. Many moons ago, we looked at a toy line called Plunderlings. They're these cute little goblin type guys made by a company called Lone Coconut. And since then, they have expanded from cute little guys into uh, scary big guys. And also not as scary, not as big, but still kind of big other guys. We don't have one of those yet, but we do have the scary big guy. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is they branched out into Plunder Strongs and Plunder Longs. We don't have a Plunder Long yet, but we do have a Plunder Strong, and he does look very strong indeed. They are just a ton of fun to play with, really well made, very awesome accessories. So I'm expecting the same uh, for this big boy. The packaging is a lot like the Plunderling packaging. You've got just an open mouth to show what's inside. It's very cute. The sides are in kind of a style of a crate. He's bursting out of it. And you can even see underneath, there's his feet. On the back, you get an image of what to expect. This guy's name is Nomad Poncho. And this one in particular is one we got because uh, Patrick really likes ponchos. And really, I can't blame him. In addition to this, we have a few other little things to look at, so let's get into it. Open from the bottom. As always, you don't have to open from the bottom. That's just what I do. Oh yeah, I forgot the plunderlings came with these ears that you could attach to the package to make like a, uh, just a plunderling face. So they've kept up that tradition with the plunder strong. Ooh, and we get a message in the back, if I can sit still long enough to read it. Toys were constructed and hand-painted with great care. Extremely grateful to the fans, that's nice. They do seem like a good company, not just like a soulless corporate automaton. We've got some pieces to dig out of clamshells, so let's do it. So far he looks just as well made as the plunderlings. The sculpt is what I can only describe as a combination of clean and rough. And what I mean by that is that it's got some rough proportions, big chunky planes, but it's all executed really well. There is a dent on the shoulder, I don't know if that's meant to be there, but I really don't expect toys to be perfect, especially not ones like this with so much mass. So tiny imperfections like that are not a problem for me. He's very top heavy, but the way the arms are positioned kind of evens out the weight, though his legs are very far forward. You can see here they're angled really, really high up near the crotch. And because of that, his stance is a little bit weird. It's kind of difficult to position him. I think if they were maybe more in the middle, more toward the butt area, he might be a little more stable, but as we've said several times on this channel, I am not a toy engineer, so I don't know. I'm sure there's a reason they did it that way. Beautiful face sculpt. I guess it feels kind of weird to call this guy beautiful, but he's beautiful in his own way. Spot black on the eyes. Really nice spot black on the nails, too. I like his Hulk shorts. And a really cute belt with a coconut tree on it. That's done really well. It's got a nice silver patina on it. He's got like some extra teeth in these belt pouches in the back. <laughs> And it, they look like this tooth right here, so does he lose that tooth sometimes and just like reaches back here and pops a new one in? I don't know. Make up your own lore. I remember the plunderlings being a lot of fun to pose, and part of that was because they were so small and just easy to maneuver. So I'm interested to see how this one stacks up. Really interesting chest joint they have here. I do quite like that. Some pretty good articulation on the head. I wasn't expecting him to have much head articulation because I just typically don't expect much from big bodied characters with small heads, but so far he's shaping up to be pretty uh, malleable. The joints aren't chunky. They're easy to move. Make sure you don't get them out of whack. A lot of swivels. Okay, this forearm joint is a little chunky, but I'm gonna be gentle. It's on a bit of a ratchet. Big, massive, meaty paws. Some twist hidden by that belt in those pants. There is some uh, oil or something underneath there that's being exposed as I twist him. Uh, that's probably just some kind of lubrication to keep him supple, but, but it is definitely there and it's a little icky. But it's better that than him getting to customers and being stuck down there. Better to be lubed up than stuck down there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, ooh, lots of good leg movement. You can see the joint there. It looks like it'd be easy to pop out, so we're gonna be a little careful. Ooh, the knee, though. Let's see. I'm sure I can get it. I'm very weak. There we go. 
I'm also trying to be gentle because I haven't heated this up at all. If I run into any trouble, then I will, but I haven't needed to so far. This foot is a bit of a chunky joint, but it works. There apparently have been some people having issues with the joints in the legs, like they're too loose. Ours is a little loose, but not so much that it's a major problem. It might get looser as we go on, but so far it's okay. Honestly, with the plunderlings, they're so small that there's less that can go wrong with them. This guy is much bigger, and I think he has more articulation, so there's just uh, more room for error there, but I'm really not noticing anything big at all except for that butt. So, as his name implies, he comes with a poncho. Very nice poncho. Intricate detail work. There is a glob of paint right here bleeding in from the dark to the light. Definitely noticeable, but not a big enough issue for me to want to raise a stink about it. I do like how this pattern is sculpted in, and then the folds just drape so nicely. Let's see. Put on your poncho. Yep, his um, legs are beginning to want to kind of bow out a little bit, so just be mindful of that. But part of it, as I said, is that they're positioned so far forward that it is just difficult to get him into a stable position. He'll also come with a very dapper hat. Very cute. Lots of uh, little details hanging from it. A cute little flower. Straps on the side. It's got a magnet, so it should fit nicely on his head. Got these notches for his ears. Perfect. I like how it matches his shorts, too. So he will come with an extra pair of holding things hands. And these little fists, and those are meant to go on a plunderling. Because uh, the original plunderlings did not have fists. Two extra head portraits. You've got kind of a sneer right here. And then a yelling face. So no matter what head is attached to him, he's always a little bit grumpy. I guess he's got a, uh, a reputation to uphold. He'll come with these two cannon guns, which are very interesting. I like the way that these are sculpted because they look pretty rough, like they were just made out of clay, kind of cobbled together. But it's done in a deliberate way. It's just a stylistic thing, and I, I don't know, I really like that. And you'll also get these hook thingies. I believe they're for attaching into the back of the poncho and you can like hold his uh, weapons in them. So we also procured some extras, including this muscle crate gray color to match his skin tone. And in this, you basically just get an extra a bunch of hands. Useful for facilitating all sorts of poses. I like these kind of claw hands. And this one is really cute. When in doubt, pinky out. So those are nice to have. I do want to see what it's like switching out his heads and hands. Because sometimes on some toys it's a little more difficult than it is on others. And he's a big boy. Oh, you're a big boy. Oh, I'm gonna have to heat you up. So that is for another time. For now, let's look at the head. Okay, that was relatively easy. That was a lot easier than the hand. And I know people don't like it when I go run these under hot water and just take them back and they're all like dripping wet. I don't mind that. And it's just super easy because like the bathroom is right over there, like right beside me. I only have to walk a few steps to get over there. But then if I have to go get my hair dryer or like get a plastic bag to put this in and then run under the hot water, that's like just a whole lot of extra steps, you know? I'm tired. I only have so much energy. But I'll do it for you guys. I'll do it. It's all for you. It's all for you. All right, a little heat and I managed to get the alternate hands in. And this cute little mug is courtesy of this extra Plunderlings pack. I believe these are all accessories for the Plunderlings, but as you can see, the Plunderstrongs can utilize at least uh, the cup from it. Getting the weapon into his big meaty paws was not difficult at all. And in addition, we also have this, uh, this effects pack. I think it's not just effects, there's like some uh, cannonballs down there too. Yeah, it's called the Boom Crate. Which sounds very comforting. So you've got all sorts of things you can plug into these. Not only do you have this explosion effect, but you've got all these different 
ball shaped items that can be expelled from this cannon gun. Very neat. Ooh, it's spiky. I just hurt myself. Be careful because uh, these parts are actually very sharp. It is heavy. Um, I don't think he's going to want to hold this up. Yeah, it's really heavy. So you might need something underneath it. Like, even with just this effects piece, it's pretty heavy. But then once you attach one of these balls, I am sure it's just going to get even heavier. Yeah, it's just like it's gotten to the point where the weapon doesn't even want to stay in his hand anymore. So you're going to need some kind of a stand if you want to do it this way. But I do like that you get all these different options for the weapon that's coming out of the cannon. And the weapon even articulates a little bit. It's on that ball joint. So it looks like you get the spiked ball, you get a coconut, you get what I think is a rock, and you get a more traditional uh, cannonball. But it's got the three divots in it like a coconut, so it comes off more as like a bowling ball, which, you know, sure, that can be a weapon. Here is what a plunder strong looks like next to the plunderling quite a size difference. And I had said that I thought the Plunder Strong had more articulation than the Plunderling, but not that much more, really. I think the only extra it has are these joints up at the biceps, because it does have this articulation here at the chest, but so does this one. It's just a different type of articulation. Man, these little guys are so much fun. This is too. It's just a little bit more work to maneuver. So there's also these hatchling bodies. They can create a new Plunderling character, but also they're a way to store the heads that you aren't using. I don't know if they'll work with the Plunder Strong head, but we're about to find out. So it can go on there, but only in a very specific way, and then you can't move it around. It could be that I'm just not doing it right, but I do think that these were made just for the Plunderlings, and maybe the Plunder Longs? I don't know. Very cool idea though for the Plunderlings, just having those extra bodies to basically hold the heads. And lastly, our box came with this nice bag just chock full of pins. Some really nice pins in here. Got this guy, just like a, all the different Plunderling characters. That guy's cool. There's a Plunder Long. Plunder Strong. Yeah, just like a ton of pins. And they're really well made. It's even got the back stamp on there. And I make pins too. So I know a good pin when I see one. I mean, I say I make them, but when you make pens, you just uh, do the design and try to make it as clean as possible and try to make it make sense in pen form and then send it off to a factory and then they make the pen. But there is work involved. So yeah, once again, a very, very fun figure. I think I prefer the Plunderlings just because they're a little bit easier to deal with and they're just so cute. Look at that. But this guy is really cool. He's got a lot of personality, a lot of articulation. I love the accessories that he comes with. He just looks really cool. They're just like fun, silly figures, and I love that. It feels like a lot of things these days aren't just fun and silly for the sake of being fun and silly. There's always got to be like some kind of a underlying premise or story or IP or whatever. But why do that when you can just make like little guys? So this has been a bit of a chaotic review. I hope that's okay. I think it fits into the spirit of Plunderlings. This is a toy line we really like. I believe we are due to get a Plunder Long at some point and we will look at him as well. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Likes and subscribes are very much appreciated. Comments are more than welcome and I'll see you guys on the next one.